Okay. Oh. Mochi mochi. Oh, uh, um, Dr. Know-it-all, I'm so sorry. I'm in the middle of a conference here. Um, I can't call you back? Okay, well look, I have a serious problem. I have many patients who are quite ill with unsustain unsustainability. Can you help us? I'm, it's really urgent and critical. How many patients? Well, there are about seven billion, at least the last time I counted. Uh, and, and there's more coming. So what can I do? Yeah, okay, yeah. All right, well, th so let me just be clear. I give them one sustainability, no, oh, 17 sustain UN sustainability goal pills every day for the next 11 years and call you in 2030, and that'll fix it. Ah, okay, well, um, thank you, I think. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> Well, I, I'm afraid that's a bit simplistic. Um, maybe he's been talking to Trump, I don't know. Um, but more seriously, I think there are other ways we're going to have to approach this, and that's what I'd like to talk about. But first of all, thank you for the opportunity to come here and to be with you and to hear the other talks and learn together about these issues. These are things which we all need to be thinking about together in different ways and from different aspects. We all have different ways of looking at this. And I just want to talk about one approach that I'm trying to understand and develop. And what we can really put it together right away by sort of saying, we're in the Anthropocene and we can't go back. And it isn't a matter of just turning around and changing things. We're in an age in which the human species has already for some time, and there's an argument about did this start with the Industrial Revolution or did it start with agriculture? Doesn't matter. The point is that humanity is making enormous changes on a planetary scale, both good and bad, if you will, and we need to find out how can we address this together. Because it is not something we can simply do alone. It is not something that we can do with one area of expertise, one discipline, or one country, or one approach. So this is a plurality of efforts that we have to bring together. And we know about these various things. I'm not going to spend time on them, the planetary boundaries, um, the, uh, Will Steffen's hockey sticks acceleration, uh, great acceleration, both the uh, social economic trends and the earth system trends, and Kate Rayworth's very interesting donut economics, or I would say annulus, between the planetary boundaries and the social boundaries. All of those are different ways then of coming to thinking about what has been agreed at a political level of the SDGs, as you well know. But I want to really ask about this in a slightly different way. The, we, have, we have the normative assertion, if you will, that we live in the Anthropocene age, that it's a, in the midst of this great acceleration, the rapid changes, and so, how can we make the kinds of societal changes that we al will allow us to move to sustainable futures? And let me emphasize two things. I don't tend to use the word sustainable development because that's in some ways a difficult term in itself. What do we mean by that? And second, I use futures plural because the future in a sustainable sense is not the same in every condition. The people I was working with in northern Siberia or in Alaska have a very different set of issues in their future than the people that my graduate student working in the slums in Kibera outside Nairobi have to face. But we all have to figure out how overall, globally, coherently, we can move towards a sustainable future for all of humanity. So 
one of the ways that I try to think about this, how can we make these changes? And one of the ways is to think about social movements and with justice and equity, not just the change, not just the development, but where does just, justice and equity come into this? What factors enable or hinder this kind of social movement? My quick point is that this is a different kind of social movement than we've seen in the past. We know, and I was deeply involved with Martin Luther King's organization in civil rights, that we have movements towards women's rights, we have labor movements, we know about those. So, so sustainability is a tough one because it's not narrowly defined and it's not so clear how does it relate to me personally, whereas the others were more clear. So what insights into these factors can we find in narrative expressions of vision and identity and how do social dynamics relate to the indicators of sustainability at multiple scales, some of which we talked about earlier this morning in the uh, lectures. And how, lastly, if I have time, I'll talk a little bit about boundary objects. I'll tell you more what I mean by this. Uh, for example, games, to help people recognize and cope with the inherent consequences of being part of a complex system.